Hi guys, and welcome back to the vlog. I am so excited to be back here with the van and with Garrick and to show you guys what we have been working on last week. We have finally started insulating the van. We insulated the floor before with that styrofoam insulation, if you guys remember, looks like this. And we decided to not go with that for our walls just because like the, the walls of the van aren't like straight and they have like a lot of crevices in them and that styrofoam insulation just doesn't really work for that. We've seen a lot of people use it but we just decided to go a different route. We are using Rockwell which looks like this. It's essentially just spun rock so like it is made out of rock so it is fire resistant and water resistant and it has a, like great soundproofing qualities which we definitely need for the van and it's also non-toxic like uh, not like fiberglass and you can touch it too uh, i would suggest wearing a mask if you are going to use it in your van and definitely shower because you can feel it on your skin after you've been touching and playing with it for a while it's not itchy you can just like feel it it kind of it just feels like little rocks all over your skin but i'll give you guys a little view of what the van looks like right now so this is the van so far we've insulated all the side walls um, and now we just have to insulate the ceiling and our back doors and our side door. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. Garrick also last night cut the holes for our uh, Max Air fans. We're going to have two. So he cut those. So we will be installing those soon and we'll show you guys all about that. Real quick, um, Morgan wants me to show you what I did with the roof here. Um, we dropped in two ceiling fans. Uh, we got the, the Max Air ones. Uh, I didn't really film it because there's like a million videos of this online. Um, but I'll show you what we did. So this is for the back one. Uh, as you can see, we kind of just, I drilled the hole or cut out a hole and then lined it, lined the hole with uh, butyl tape and then <clears throat> dropped it in. Put this, sil put just silicone um, weather, all weather uh, silicone in there. Um, as you can see, we didn't make it look pretty. I used an entire tube on both of them because, well, because I could and I really didn't want the van to leak. One thing that I will say though, that I see a lot of people kind of neglecting in their videos, uh, just from my personal experience of just working around housing and stuff, is that it doesn't matter how nice it looks. Lots of people like do a pretty strip and run it and you know, and they don't use that much. They want it to look nice. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but the most important part is to make sure that your silicone sticks to the roof and to this because that's what your ceiling is. It's nice to have a nice pretty bead through here, but if it doesn't stick to the roof, you're gonna get a leak. And unfortunately, I think there's a lot of people that get leaks like that. Uh, I know I've seen a few videos like that with people like, I don't know why my roof is leaking, my roof is leaking. Well, that's why, um, but yeah, that's just that. Okay, so here is the um, rear brake light that I just pulled off. I just um, took it out and I kind of used this taped <clears throat> flathead screwdriver to kind of like pry it off of the back of the van. And I just taped it so that I didn't chip any of the paint. So we are going to replace this with this so that we get a nice backup camera 
Uh, we just got this off Amazon. All the links would be below. So it doesn't come with the light on the inside though, so I have to pry this out. I'm probably just gonna try to stick a flathead um, screwdriver in there and try to get it out. Okay, I finally got it out, and now I just have to slip that in there. You just want to make sure when you're inserting it that this light, this wire, comes out through the top. There's a little hole there. So you want to make sure it's on top and not stuck underneath it. So I either lost our adhesive or it was never sent to us, but I just used some butyl tape and kind of figured something out, out so I can attach this back to the van now. So I'm going to go do that. I've gone ahead and attached the light back in here and then just make sure you clean um, the edges off because there was a lot of like the old um, adhesive there. So now I'm just going to go ahead and put this on. And screw it in in the old holes okay so I've just taken out the like factory light that's in here and I've just fished the back of our backup camera through the top here and now we're gonna connect it to the extension wire and fish it all the way to the front Okay, so we've just gone ahead and removed this piece from the front here so that we can wire our backup camera through the headliner shelf here and then down and we're gonna go down and under here and then up into our stereo. But we are going to be replacing our stereo too so we'll show you guys that. So this is the stereo that we purchased. It's a double din Pioneer and it's got like a seven inch screen, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so there's no like DVDs or CDs, it, but it has Apple CarPlay. So we can hook it up with our phones and play our music and also get like Google Maps and Spotify and anything else that we want. So I'll be opening that up for you guys. So we are gonna start by taking this whole front panel off and I'm just gonna be using a tape flathead to do all that. So now you just want to unplug this part from the front, like that, and now it's off. So next up is to start unscrewing some of these bolts that are in here holding the radio in. Okay, so this is what we are going to do for wiring our stereo. So we have our little adapter piece here and then the actual wiring harness that came with the stereo itself. So we are going to strip the wires and we are going to crimp it with these little guys. Yeah. Got my way. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. Okay, so, so far, I have connected all of our wires. I used some crimpets and some morettes because I ran out of the crimpets, um, but they're essentially the same thing. And then I have our steering wheel control module kind of set up here. So um, with our unit, like it's different for each vehicle. We, and I actually had to contact Metra, who creates these, uh, to figure out which wires we needed to attach because it's not the same for each vehicle. So it's not the same for the Freightliner and Dodge. And we have a Freightliner instead of a Dodge and they didn't have instructions online for that. 
So I just have to go ahead and finish attaching that to the actual vehicle's radio power connector here. But other than that, I have our antenna adapter hooked up here. And then this is our backup camera wire, which is plugged in. And then I also have the USB cord for the Apple CarPlay running through here. We're probably going to take out the cigarette lighter down here and uh, run this USB cord through it instead of that. And then otherwise, everything else is hooked up at the back here. So to splice my wires, I'm not going to cotter them. I'm actually just going to use, um, I picked these up at Canadian Tire. There's just these uh, stripping tap connectors. So I'm going to try them out and hope that they work. And then I'm going to plug this bad boy in and hope everything works. Okay, I have popped our little punch here and cup holder back in. So now we have our USB for the Apple CarPlay routed through here from the radio itself. And then I also have uh, spliced the ground and the power from the uh, backup camera to our 12 volt cigarette lighter here. So that's all hooked up and ready to go. And I have put the cover back on. I just have to pop it in. And I won't do that quite yet though, just in case this doesn't work, but we are going to start it and hope that it works. I'm gonna check. First try. Nice. It was not my first try. So what we ended up having to do, because for some reason, with this head unit and this vehicle, for some reason, when we turn the ignition, it will not turn on. We don't know why, it just won't. So we ended up combining the constant and the ignition wire. So now we can just turn it on and off manually by ourselves, which is kind of going to be annoying because it won't turn on when we turn the vehicle on and we'll have to turn it off every time we get out of the vehicle, but it works. So we're fine. And we managed to maintain our steering wheel controls. So we are happy with that. All right guys, so that is a wrap on vlog number three of the van uh, build. So I hope you liked it. Obviously there's still a lot of work to go. Uh, Morgan crushed it though. <laughs> she put in some good hours while I was at work. So pretty excited um, to see what else she can do, you know? And he can do it. Yeah. So next, uh, next up are the solar panels going up, getting mounted, wired, and then we're gonna start pulling some wire through and I guess vapor barrier. Mm -hmm. And we'll see where we get, yeah for the next weekend. So until then, I will see you then. Bye everybody.